Hello, everybody. How's it hanging, humans? So I'm sitting up in this tree, cutting down some of this would-be tree hay for the goats down there if they chose not to eat it right now. Thinking about, oh, you know, monkeys, humans, B12, the usual. So there's this myth, a uh, hypothesis, if we want to be accurate, that vegans like to spread and introduce by means of the following phrase, and I quote, Do you even know where your B12 comes from? Unquote. I know where my B12 comes from. But anyway, back to this hypothesis that is obviously being presented as fact by the most scientific community out there always asking for citations, never providing any. Go figure. The hypothesis that, well, we used to get our B12 from dirty groundwater and unwashed tubers. <laughs> Are there any studies showing that humans can actually absorb vitamin B12? Because the many strains of bacteria that produce B12 do reside in a healthy human colon producing B12 bacteria. Unfortunately for the human, there's no vitamin absorption going on in the colon. So even though we do have this B12 bacteria in our guts, forget how it got there, it's useless to us anyway. Now wouldn't this suggest to you, all of you intelligent and scientific people out there, who love you some evolution, I'm cool with microevolution, bacteria evolving into my father? <laughs> That's your religion, if it is. But wouldn't microevolution suggest that, since we don't have the ability to absorb the B12 that no doubt is being produced in our colon, that maybe we evolved getting B12 from a different source. But let me backtrack a little bit because there seems to be some confusion in the vegan community as to what is the B12 producing bacteria versus B12. They're not one and the same. They're not interchangeable, right? I mean, just like with any other bacteria, the B12, the many strains of the B12 producing bacteria need a perfect environment to be able to thrive, proliferate, and as a byproduct of their metabolism, produce B12. And the human gut, the ruminant gut, or the gut of just about any animal, I suppose, is the perfect kind of environment for exactly that to happen. And the world outside of that gut is not. I mean, you have UV rays beaten down on the ground, killing bacteria. You have well, sun rays in general, dry heat. You have other bacteria fighting you. It's too cold for you as that bacteria to be able to do anything. You're just barely surviving in most situations in the world outside of the rumen and gut. I mean, I suppose it's possible that there were some really warm creeks where all kinds of fermentation was happening and this B12 bacteria was thriving in those creeks or where there is a compost pile, natural, artificial, with fermentation happening, this B12 bacteria can thrive in there and produce B12. Those scenarios definitely do exist, but what are you saying? Are you saying we were drinking warm and scummy creek water? That doesn't sound very refreshing. Are you saying we were eating this foul-smelling dirt? Show me another animal that does that. And here's the problem with all of that. If you have a nice, warm, funky, disgusting environment for the good bacteria to proliferate, guess what else is happening? All kinds of bad, potentially lethal bacteria is, well, thriving as well. So just as likely, theoretically, as we were to get B12 out of these nasty quote-unquote food sources 
or sources of water, we were just as likely to die. And what other animal out there does that? So it doesn't even seem plausible that we would do that, seeing as we seem to have a natural aversion to foul-smelling stuff in general. Wouldn't the fact that we do have this B12 producing bacteria in our guts and yet it's useless to us, wouldn't that suggest a different evolutionary adaptation, a different source of vitamin B12? And let's suppose some of us did do this, consume foul-smelling, dirty creek water and dirt. Those of us that survived this experience that was only available to you a couple months out of the year when the temperature and moisture was just right. How the hell did we get B12 in the winter? Were we digging for tubers with sticks and frozen ground? What tubers grow in the winter? And this creek that in the summer might be just warm enough and just foul enough for the B12 producing bacteria to thrive in there. When that shit froze over, I mean, that bacteria was barely surviving, if at all. Definitely not producing B12. This hypothesis doesn't make any sense. Looking at it from an evolutionary perspective, does it? I mean, take the gorilla, for example. I mean, one of our closest relatives, supposedly, right? Since we are talking about evolution. And I'm skeptical about all this, but let's suppose at some point in our evolutionary history, we were a lot more like the gorilla. The gorilla hardly drinks any water and definitely doesn't dig the ground for tubers. Chimpanzees are high up in the trees getting their food. What? What they do do is eat their doo-doo. And what's interesting about that, the theory goes, is that because they're not getting enough nutrition out of their food, the first go round, well, they ingest it again, right? Coprophagy. Both chimpanzees and gorillas in the wild eat their own shit to get the maximum amount of nutrition, they say, out of their food. I guess apparently their digestion is too fast for them to be able to fully use the nutrition available in the fiber that they ingest. But maybe they're also eating their own poop because well, what they're doing is they're pooping out a lot of the B12 producing bacteria and with it, the B12. And seeing as their diets are, I would say, deficient in meat, they don't eat enough of it, they really love it, they want more of it, they just can't get enough of it, especially the chimpanzee. Well, maybe they have to compensate by eating their own shit and getting that B12 back in. Maybe the absorption of vitamins in their colon is not as efficient as, as it could be. Maybe everything moves too fast. Maybe everything moves so fast they're not absorbing enough B12 for them to thrive. So they eat their own shit for those and I'm sure other reasons, right? And the interesting thing about coprophagy is that when you put these animals in zoos and they're no longer being fed their natural diet, Precisely, because we don't really know what they eat exactly. We just don't. All of a sudden, gorillas, chimpanzees, they start eating more and more of their own feces. Well, why is that? Well, probably because they're not feeding that gorilla a whole bunch of meat. And in the case of the chimpanzee, probably because he doesn't have access to the cage next door full of delicious monkeys. So they eat their own shit. Because their man-prepared diet is just not good enough. And what's even more interesting about the way some of these animals behave in zoos is that they seem to exhibit a lot of different behaviors. They don't seem to exhibit as much or at all in the wild that, if exhibited by human beings, would be considered akin to mental illness. Now, could it be that this B12 deficiency is causing that, seeing as it's related to mental illness and neurological problems in human beings? Could that be what's happening with these poor animals in zoos? I think it is. Seems to make sense to me. So no matter how you look at it, this hypothesis that we drank foul-smelling creek water 
because it's so thirst quenching or ate some rotting dirt that was just as likely to nourish as it was to kill us the idea that that's what we did in order to get our B12 while we have all these cave paintings of all kinds of hunts going on yeah let's just ignore that Find me a cave painting with the prehistoric man digging the frozen ground with the stick for some tubers. <laughs> yeah, okay. But it is plausible that at some point in our evolutionary prehistory, we did get enough dietary B12 as herbivores or as mostly herbivores. But it's not likely that it was from nasty creek water or rotten dirt. We probably ate our own shit. And what's interesting about some of these vegans out there, such as Tim Sheave, there is this recognition on the part of a lot of vegans that the diet is deficient. And there seems to be this need to get some of this nutrition that we excrete back in, even though for the time being that's in the form of urine. It's interesting how and I'm not saying these are correct scientific terms, the vegan seems to be engaging in this de-evolution of man, right? Starting to consume piss. What's next? Well, coprophagy, right? Anyway, I've been babbling long enough. This whole idea that Dr. Greger and all of his parrots seem to be pushing, it, it's just pure nonsense. It doesn't make any sense logically no matter how you slice it. It just doesn't make any sense. But as I say, I've been babbling way too long, and I think it's time I come down from this tree just as our ancestors supposedly did two and a half million years ago. So why don't you grab my hand, dear vegan, and come down from the tree with me. Or start eating your own shit. I could give two fucks. Thanks for watching, guys.